joining with us today. Um, we're going to be, uh, let me get uh, some slides up here. Uh, and I'll just uh, share real briefly uh, what we're going to be doing, and then we'll get started. Um, present, there we go. All right. Um, so uh, plan is for today uh, just to do a quick overview of uh, the uh, survey results uh, that we had from the survey this week, uh, and then do a quick update on uh, upcoming activities uh, that we're going to have with SOGO and how you can uh, support uh, your students. Um, to start off with, uh, actually, I want to start off with a, uh, a joke. Uh, and uh, I apologize, but I'm, I lost a view of everybody. And uh, let me update that a little bit here. All right. Uh, so the, we had asked as part of the survey, uh, what was uh, some people's favorite jokes? And uh, one in particular uh, that stood out to me that I liked a lot uh, was what happens, and it seems very appropriate now, what happens in a distance learning class uh, after virtual recess? And the answer is resume. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Um, so uh, going back to the slides here, um, I wanted to talk about the uh, survey a little bit. Uh, uh, as uh, I think everybody uh, saw, and, and we had a really good response. We had uh, 56 uh, people who responded to the survey uh, with a good uh, balance between the different groups, uh, which, which was really positive. Um, and we had uh, several questions. Uh, uh, one was about uh, communications. Uh, just are people feeling like they are getting uh, good feedback, good communications about what's going on and able to keep up with things and uh, really got a very positive response on that. 98% uh, of the people said uh, they were finding that helpful. Uh, and I know we'll continue to keep trying to communicate more and better, uh, but it looks like uh, we're doing some pretty good stuff there. So I really appreciate uh, uh, Trina's work on that in particular. Uh, the, the other big question that we had was about uh, the structure of the rehearsals and how that is working out for people. And uh, here again, it was not quite as positive about communication, but still I think a real positive result. Uh, two thirds of everybody uh, thinks that their uh, students are really enjoying their time. About 25% uh, found some sections better than others. Uh, and uh, generally, uh, I think the, the feedback we got was that the uh, sectionals uh, that involve smaller groups and a little bit more interaction are more engaging for students. And, and that's, that's not a surprise. Uh, and I know that uh, Mr. May and Mr. Allison are going to be working uh, over the next uh, uh, weeks and months uh, to, to try to work to emphasize uh, more of that uh, and work with the TAs to see what else we can do on that. Um, and uh, another couple other comments that we got that were uh, uh, more frequent uh, on the survey was uh, certainly everybody has a desire to get back to some kind of normal uh, in-person uh, rehearsing as soon as we can. And uh, uh, questions about can we uh, start up some things with small groups uh, related to that. And I'll talk more about that later. Uh, there's challenges uh, with that, uh, of course. And uh, but anyway, we'll we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Uh, but right now, I want to turn things over to uh, Roberta Wagner, who is our uh, vice president for the SOGO board, and uh, she's going to be talking a little bit about different ways that uh, parents can get involved uh, to support SOGO. So, Roberta, over to you. Great, thank you, Milt. Um, Welcome everybody, I'm Roberta Wagoner and this is my third year on the board. My son John is um, in conservatory and for his, in his sixth year with SOGO. And like all of you, we really miss um, seeing each other, seeing all of you in the lobby and in the parking lot and just being able to check in and see um, how everyone's doing and just keeping in touch that way. So just wanted to share um, some ways that we can um, try to keep doing that. Um, one is um, watching for those emails, staying informed, um, 
Karina Allison puts out the emails once a week to us that usually come out on Saturday and they are just full of very useful information and they're, they also have lots of useful links in them so that you can easily get to um, find out more information about what you um, want to know more about. Um, also, our website is um, still being kept up to date, so you can always check in there. But again, those links will take you right, right where you want to go if there's uh, something, something interesting you. The students have another way of getting together and staying connected and, and staying informed, and that is being a representative on the student board. Um, we have um, representatives from each of the three um, orchestras and the conservatory members um, attend and participate in the monthly uh, um, adult board meetings uh, once a week and they are a very important part of that meeting. Um, we're really glad to have them there and to have their input and their perspective um, at each of our meetings. Um, so if your student um, is interested in becoming a representative, they should contact their um, conductor and find out more about it. Um, another thing is those emails that come out once a week. Um, there are lots of good things in there that you can share with other people. If you um, have family and friends, who might be interested in SOGO, you can um, forward bits and pieces to them. We'll be able to um, share our virtual concert with family and friends. So be watching for the technicalities of how we're gonna um, be able to do that. Um, and if you have a Facebook account, we, um, SOGO Student Orchestras has um, a Facebook account. So you can always um, check there and share things from there if you wanna um, help us get the word out and share SOGO with more friends and family. If um, you know any families with um, student musicians who might be interested in joining SOGO, um, that's always a possibility. They can always get in touch with us or you can let us know. Um, somehow we can reach out to them or they can get in touch with us and let us know if they want to participate more in SOGO. Um, for all of us um, parents, there are lots of opportunities to join a committee. We have a volunteer committee, um, a finance committee, development committee, and then there are always uh, special projects going on that could use um, some additional help and input on those. So if you're interested at all in um, any of those areas, um, you can reach out with an email to us and let us know that you have a little time and wanna participate a little bit more. And then, of course, there is board membership. I have been so um, thankful and grateful to have been a board member. It's such a wonderful group of people to work with. And um, it's really been, been a lot of fun. The meetings are not at all boring, like some might be. Um, and uh, they're a lot of fun. Uh, they're very interesting and dynamic and uh, we work on special projects um, like right now we're working on um, how to broaden our um, the our access to um, music in our community reaching out to um, more and more people and families who um, may not yet be involved in music and we want to um, bring everybody in that's interested in music. Um, we meet once a month, um, plus a little um, helping out a little bit at concerts and um, some committee support. Um, so get in touch, let us know, send us an email if you would be interested in joining our board. And I think that brings me to the end. I'll turn it back to Milt. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, Roberta. And uh, next on our uh, uh, Presentations is uh, Karina Allison, our executive director, and I know she was a, a little bit delayed uh, joining in. I want to check to see. Karina, are you there? Oops. Yes. Okay, uh, there you go. All right. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Um, I'm just looking at a whole bunch of new faces on Zoom, and I'm sorry, I normally would be much more familiar with most of you through either audition process or um, at the rehearsals. And um, so I'm sorry that uh, we don't know each other a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, 
well activities and one that's going on right now that I'm sure you're very aware of. Um, it's our buy local holiday fundraiser uh, for SOGO. I've never seen such enthusiastic shopping in the 21 years that I've uh, held this fundraiser. So thank you for all of you that have already purchased. Um, I'm excited about the fundraiser because we are actually helping out the local business person. And so much more, our hearts go out to those whose businesses have not flourished during this difficult time. If you have not purchased, please check out the items we have for sale. The quality, um, uh, floral quality poinsettias are beautiful. The jingle bells happen to be my favorite. The Reeves coffee, Sogo swag are great gifts for yourself and friends. The masks have been flying off the shelf. Uh, so keep watching um, our site for new patterns, like the holiday music mask that's actually on the slide before you. Orders will be taken through November 9, and a socially distanced pickup will happen Tuesday, December 1, from 4 to 6 p.m. at my house, the Allison House. And you'll get information in your weekly emails about that, just as reminders. Okay, next slide. So our second activity is coming up. You haven't heard about this one probably. It's called Give Local, and it's an annual two-week giving campaign. Give Where You Live, hosted by the Community Foundation of South Puget Sound. It's designed to encourage our philanthropy and our local communities. Starting November 9th, you can become a part of this growing movement to change lives by supporting a cause that is dear to your heart, and hopefully you would choose SOGO. Next slide. Give Local features approximately 100 nonprofits from Thurston, Mason, and Lewis counties. I would encourage you to look at some of the different ones um, that are on the Give Local. Beginning November 9th and ending November 20, we are inviting you, your family and friends to participate in this two week campaign. 100% of your donation goes to SOGO because all the credit card fees are covered by Oli Fed, our local bank. And catch this, this is an extra plus, your donation is stretched by a bonus fund. Um, last year, donors gave SOGO over 8,000 through the Give Local, and the bonus fund stretched it past 11,000. So that's very significant use of uh, those donor dollars. So you can imagine we are pretty excited by the support we received through the campaign. When you go to the campaign page, it looks something like this. They are using a new platform, so it'll be slightly different what you see on the slide right now. But it will still have those darling pictures of SOGO musicians, stories, and how donors can help. There's a donate button where you can, for, uh, where you can give. Our goal this year is to raise $10,000 to offset our programming costs, especially as we have gone virtual. You can help with your donation and extending that invitation to family, friends, and coworkers through your favorite medium, whether social media or to a socially di distanced coffee date. We would appreciate your help in definitely getting the word out. So how does this work? Um, so go to the SOGO website during the campaign and you will see a Give Local button on the front page of our website. It's not up there yet. Um, click the button and it will take you to this Give Local SOGO campaign. It is best if you give online, but you can arrange to give cash or check or stocks or any other assets through the Community Foundation for SOGO by calling them. The number is noted on the slide. Remember, it's so important that your donation is stretched by a bonus fund. It's, of course, tax deductible, and it starts with a minimum, catch this, a dollar. So invite your friends. <laughs> um, you're a part of a So Go team, so help us reach and exceed our goal of 10,000 this year. Next slide. Okay, now the fun stuff. Looking ahead at what we all are excited to see is this 3 p.m. Sunday, December 13, 2020 virtual concert. 
From the comfort of your own home, you'll have an opportunity to enjoy all the SOGO members have been working, have been looking forward to. Be sure to share this performance far and wide. Although it will be presented that day, you can watch it later, even weeks and months later, as many times as you want. Um, I asked my husband to give us a, a, you know, 40 seconds of how we can help our musicians to prepare well for making that video. So here are a few words um, he's sharing, going to share with you. Oops, that didn't work. <laughs> Virtual recording is so much more difficult really than playing in a regular concert because the recording has to be just such high quality. So just make sure that you're helping your student to really do a great recording and have a neutral background. Um, you, they're gonna need help with that to make sure that the sound is really good and the video is as best as you can get. Um, just follow the guidelines that are in the, the information sheet and just check off to make sure that you're doing everything that you need to, to help make a great recording and to help out our recording engineer. For the musicians to prepare well, um, that document he referred to was in your most recent SOGO email. So please be sure to follow the instructions very carefully. That ends my portion of the meeting. Now back to Milt, our president. All right, thanks, Karina. Mm -hmm. And uh, I promise I don't have much more to say, uh, but but hopefully, hopefully you'll find it useful. Um, I wanted to uh, just talk very briefly about uh, uh, looking forward to the future uh, and, and where we think things are going to be headed. Uh, we are, uh, uh, our staff is working a lot uh, looking ahead on continued programming uh, for next, uh, for the rest of this season, uh, as well as starting to even think about uh, what we can do in the future. Um, as they think about it, uh, your feedback uh, is really important and uh, both what we've gotten in the survey and any other ideas that you uh, have that you send to us, uh, definitely appreciate all that feedback. Um, it, it, I think it is, uh, uh, I expect that we will be coming out with some announcements in December about more, with more detail about what to expect uh, through the rest of this season. Uh, but I do think that uh, given uh, the status of things uh, in the community and the, with the COVID virus and so forth, I think it's reasonable to expect that we're going to have some continued emphasis uh, on virtual programming uh, uh, for the time being. Uh, and I know that uh, that can be frustrating at times, but I also know that we're all working together to make the best of that and, um, and, and we'll continue to do that. Um, we've gotten some feedback uh, uh, in the survey and also uh, individually uh, that people would like to see opportunities to do uh, uh, some in-person programming, uh, getting together to play music. Uh, and that's that's really problematic uh, for us uh, right now for, for a few reasons, uh, including uh, just getting space available. It's really hard to get, a, get space that we can use uh, with all of the restrictions that are out there, uh, plus just the restrictions on numbers and cleaning and, and so forth. Uh, plus, our staff is so busy uh, these virtual programs require a lot of planning ahead of time to make them work effectively. Uh, and they're so busy uh, with all of that that it's, it's really hard to free up time uh, to support uh, in, in person events. But that being said, uh, uh, you don't need to wait for us uh, to, to do that. Uh, students and families can work together to organize small groups on their own. Uh, and we can help by providing music for that. Uh, uh, but we would also, of course, encourage anybody who does that to play it safe, uh, continue to uh, do what makes sense in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, COVID uh, precautions and so forth. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, Mr. May and Mr. Allison are, are thinking a lot about the future and are always appreciating uh, ideas from people. We really are trying to keep things fresh uh, from week to week and month to month as we go. Uh, Look into the future. 
uh, I think we will be thinking about what can we do as uh, as as we get come out of the virus situation and maybe some uh, in-person small group activities may be some of the first things that we can do. Uh, we'll see about that. Um, but uh, uh, the other thing to think about is that there are so many good things that, that we're experiencing uh, through this process with the virtual programming. Uh, as an example, the master classes that are starting up this week. Uh, and as we look forward to the future, we're also thinking about what are those good things that, that we're using now that we can retain for the future and, and continue even when things get back to normal. Uh, so uh, we'll continue to be monitoring that and, and seeing what works uh, in, with that as we go forward. Um, I wanted uh, just to, to wrap things up. Uh, my favorite joke of all the ones that everybody sent in uh, was this one uh, about the uh, two drums and a cymbal uh, that fell off a cliff. And I'm going to try again to link to something and see what happens here. Introducing. Oh, and right after that, we had to stop. Here we go. You've heard the old joke that goes two drums and a cymbal fall off a cliff. Right, well, we've got two drums, a cymbal, and, and a cliff. You ready? Ready! What's black and white and red all over? A badger in a blender. Yes! <laughs> all right, I had to share that. Sorry about that. But being a percussionist, oops, ah, being a percussionist, uh, I like that one a lot. Um, so anyway, uh, that that concludes our meeting. Uh, we're wrapping up a couple minutes early. Uh, I just want to say uh, again, thank you to everybody uh, for sticking with us through this. I, I know that uh, these have been challenging times and uh, uh, being on Zoom all the time isn't always everybody's favorite thing. And uh, But I think we all come at it with a spirit of trying to make the best of things and uh, really appreciate our students and our uh, teaching artists and our conductors who have really been working hard to uh, um, make good things happen. And uh, just very, uh, very pleased with all of that. Um, since we've got a couple minutes left over, uh, I'm just gonna uh, just check in to see if anybody has a, a, a question or a comment. We've got a couple of minutes. Uh, we'll open things up and uh, just unmute yourself and, and raise your hand and uh, shout out. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi, I was just curious, will the checkpoint recording, will that be available, blended together so for the families or the kids to hear? No, the checkpoint recording is for conductors and teaching artists to give fee individual feedback to students in okay. preparation for making the final recording. The final recording is what will be blended together and broadcast. Okay. And are they having... Uh oh, you you cut out, Michelle. Yeah, we 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 lost your sound. She uh, seems to be having technical difficulties. Uh, yes. Yep. Oh, she got her thumbs up. All right, let's, uh, we'll move on and see if anybody else has any questions and then uh, 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 Michelle can unmute again if she uh, is able to work through that. She's good, I think. I, um, I saw a question about, um, can a sample video be uploaded to the website? Will, uh, that that's a great idea. Let us. I can't give you an answer on that right now, but but we'll certainly think about that and see if we can do that. I know examples are always helpful. Okay, Michelle, you want to try again? Yeah. Um, we used well on our Mac. We use Photo Booth for the recording. Is that acceptable? Yeah, that's that's what I do. Um, so you know, the tricky thing about it is you need is you need two devices. So you can either do it. 
um, you know, with with the with the click track playing from a phone into your ear and having the computer record or the other way around. Um, it funnily enough, I think the recording quality on on most phones is actually better than on most computers. Um, but uh, if I am using my computer for recording, then photo booth is what I use. So and I have another question. Yeah. Um, the sound wasn't great off from our Mac. We thought it would be okay, but it wasn't wonderful. I mean, we'd be willing to get an external mic, I guess, depending on the cost. Is that something? Ex um, external mics are always helpful, um, it, and it, it will improve. It will improve the sound. Um, if, you, if you have any that you recommend, if you want to let like send it in an email or let us know, we could look at getting one. Yeah, I know Mr. Allison has some stuff about that, so we'll make sure we push that out again. Thank you. Great. Thanks for all that, Michelle. Appreciate it. Yeah. Question. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have two two questions. One of them is about the mic. My uh, we did try uh, an, a, like a nice external mic that my son has, mm -hmm. and it still recorded the way the computer did, which was like it seemed to like take a couple seconds to pick up sound, so it sounded distant, and then it would kick in and sound a little bit better. I, I don't know quite how to describe it, but the mic. Even the nice mic mm, still had some some issues. So maybe maybe we could get some advice on how to how to set the mics uh, to function best. Um, but also, um, oh, the 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 clap or the stomp that they're supposed to do, uh, you know, three seconds or three beats before they start playing. How important is that that it's like visible or that you can hear the the stomp or the clap? It can be as simple as just a, if they're a wind instrument player, just click on their keys or just tap their string with their bow. That's that's plain ah. It just really helps. What, what it does is it saves our recording engineer tons of time because he can line up with, he can see very easily that bump and it just makes it so easy for him to line everything up and literally saves him hours and hours of time. Got it. Okay. So for sure by the, the, I know that I'm not sure if this stomp was super clear with my kids this time around, but by November 1st, we'll, it can we'll be, do the bow or yeah. Easy is just a tap. Right, what, what instrument? Violin. Yeah, Violin. The strings would be fine. And okay. you, probably for the USB mic that you plug <laughs> your laptop, I don't know what kind of laptop you have but you should be able to moderate your settings. So it's accessing that there's probably some, they're just not talking well together. Don't you mm -hmm. think Cameron, that's probably the issue. You, yeah, you probably know more about it than I do, but, but my guess is that it would be a, that, that one is trying to outsmart the other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. probably some sort of, um, yeah. And for the for the mic, kind of the, one of the standards is kind of the the Audio Technica. It's called an AT twenty twenty. It's about a hundred bucks though. But uh, there are some. If you go into Amazon and find some that are comparable, and if you find good reviews, that's already. okay. No, oh, oh no, somebody else asked. The, the oh. person previous asked uh, about Michelle. that. Michelle. Michelle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And and you know, in the long term, it's probably going to be a valuable asset anyway. So it's probably going to be a good investment. All right. Uh, anything else before we wrap up? Yeah, Michelle. Sorry to ask so many questions. Can he repeat the mic? He said, I, I didn't quite catch it. I caught it a little bit, but I didn't quite catch. Um, Audio Technica AT2020. <clears throat> and if you find some that are similar to that, because a lot of times you'll say, it'll say what what people bought. I really don't know all of them that are out there, but there, I, I'm sure there are some that are similar that would probably be cheaper. Okay. And if you look at the reviews, you'll probably find one. And so the stomp, is that for the audio or is it for the visual? Because my son did the trumpet and he, he hit it, but it was That's fine. Power. Okay. It's the audio. We're okay. looking for the audio bump. Okay. Gotcha. That's the most important part. Good questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish we had better answers. <laughs> Yeah. They were great answers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Greg and Cameron, I'm really glad y'all were here to, to help out with that. That, that was uh, really good. It's all invaded our house. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Uh, well, it is uh, 2.45 and uh, we need to wrap up so that uh, we can get our students warming up for rehearsal. And uh, so uh, if nobody has anything else, we'll uh, uh, say thank you again for joining in and, and thanks for uh, uh, just doing everything that you do to help help make this all work. It's a it's really a, a team effort and uh, just really appreciate it greatly. So thank you all very much and uh, uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.